In this video, I will show you how to make your very own strike to light color changing morning glory sparklers. Stay tuned. The first composition is this, pulled from an expired Orion road flare. And here's the second one, it's the fountain formula used in a previous video and I'll link that above. This is the bread and butter for a beginner who doesn't have access to other compositions. You can see that's the fountain, but we're going to enhance it with a little bit of magnesium shavings, so it burns a little more like that. The third composition is from a green firework fountain, and these were defective so I tore them apart and we'll be using them here. The same is the case for this white sparking composition, it's pulled from a defective fountain. And if you don't have access to these other types of compositions, you can just use the second one. I'm using those large fireplace matches as the base for these. If you don't have them, that's fine, you can just use any old stick and light them with a lighter. But this is a pretty convenient feature. My source of magnesium is an anode from a water heater, but you can use a fire starter just as well. You can see I'm just using a pocket knife to scrape some shavings off. You can see how the angle of the blade is very important. You can't try to cut into these like you're whittling a stick. It has to be more of a shaving action as you see here. And you can see that the result is pretty coarse shavings, so I'm just going to kind of roll it between my fingers to bust it up a little bit to get us a little bit of a finer result to make smaller sparks that aren't as blinding. You can see that's about what it should look like. So all you need to do is lay a thin line of each composition in the order in which you want them to burn. I'm doing red, and then the charcoal with the magnesium sparks, followed by the green, and then finally the white composition. The thickness of the line is what determines the burn rate, so I suggest that you don't lay too thick a line, nor too thin a line. You want it just thick enough that it has an impressive display, but is not too aggressive. And then you can see I'm sprinkling those magnesium flakes over the first two colors. That red composition is a little bit slow burning and just a little bit mundane if there's not something to spruce it up a little bit. And same with the charcoal, it just needs something to add a little more gusto. The last two compositions, however, do not need any enhancement. Those are vibrant enough on their own. Again, you don't need to make these color changing. That second stage is interesting enough as it is. You might want to slow it down if you're making the entire sparkler out of that. Uh, just add a little bit more charcoal, perhaps a little more sulfur, and a little less potassium nitrate when you make that composition. You can see that the line I just laid is relatively thick, compared to this one which is on the thinner side. This is what is displayed at the end of the video, and I think this is a more appropriate burn rate. However, if you want to lay a thicker line like this, you could stretch it as I did in my How to Make Waterproof Fuse video, and here's the card for that. You can see that I'm wrapping this up in saran wrap, and that does two things. Firstly, it makes it waterproof, and second, it makes it so that you can stretch it, like I just mentioned. However, it does create the problem of burning plastic. If you wish to mitigate that, you could use a wetted tissue paper to roll these up, but that does create a need for drying time. This is pretty convenient. No matter which way you choose to make them, I would suggest that you do not breathe in the smoke. It's pretty toxic either way. Then you can see that once this is all drawn out, you can tear it off the plastic wrap sheet, just like any other time. Once I have the piece torn off, I trim up the ends. This just makes ignition easier, and it cleans them up a little bit. However, it's not exactly necessary. And you can see that once that's done, this is really starting to take shape. I opted to use this paper tube I had rolled as a handle, but that's simply because the match was not long enough. When you trim the ends with the dikes, you may see that it crimps it. And if it does, you'll want to pop open the end close to the match head to ensure good ignition. And then I just use a piece of scotch tape at the top and bottom to secure this. And with that, it's effectively done. But I like to decorate it with a little bit of tissue paper. It just makes it look a little bit more professional. It might help aid structural integrity as well, but mainly it's just for the looks. You can see I'm just using a thin piece and wrapping it around as I go. And then you can see when I get to the bottom, I just pull the handle off, wrap it up, and stick the handle back on. No need for tape or glue here. And that completes this sparkler. It's a pretty nice result, but it could look nicer. 
where it really shines is in performance. All right, I've just got the striker from the matchbox to light it. One thing that's important is to move upwind of these. You can see how I might want to slow down that second stage. That last stage is my favorite though. And then here's a store about Morning Glory for comparison. Nice. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope the video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.